Welcome to the Ostomy and IBD Life Show. Here we are, another week, another episode. My name is Elaine O'Rourke. I am your host. I have an ostomy. I have had Crohn's disease. And this is a platform where we get to discuss all different topics each week. It's something different about living with an ostomy or IBD from the physical aspect to the mental and emotional aspects of all of this and disease in general. So this week's topic is about being new with an ostomy, and this is coming from having Crohn's disease. My special guest this week, I'm so excited, is my good friend, Sarah McKinnon, who is brand new to having an ostomy, but she can tell you about that herself when she comes on. Firstly, please put up any comments. If you're watching on Facebook, I can only see the comments that come through through my Ostomy and IBD Life page for some reason. Maybe that will be different this week. Um, but also post up comments if you are viewing on YouTube. Now, if you are trying to find this show and you're having difficulty, the best place to go is to my YouTube channel and that is under Elaine O'Rourke Yoga Ostomy and IBD. I'll put that up here so that you can see. It's Elaine O'Rourke Yoga Ostomy and IBD. And you can also subscribe. That's really useful because then you'll you'll know when there's new videos coming up and new content being put out there. You can also follow me on Facebook via Ostomy and IBD Live and on Instagram through Elaine O'Rourke Yoga. Um, so firstly, let's get back to the topic at hand this week, being new with an ostomy. So I've had mine now for 15 years. I've had permanent ileostomy from Crohn's disease, as I said. I do remember a lot of it, but I'm not looking at it through fresh eyes anymore. So that is why I'm bringing Sarah on so that we can get a realistic view as to what life is like and to be able, while well, also be following her as we go through the next number of months to see her progress. I do want to say that she is doing amazing. We go swimming together and she, she loves the water. She loves swimming as much as I do surfing. And um, we, we took a swim yesterday and had such a laugh. But, you know, she is doing terrific. Her mindset, everything about it is amazing. So if you are not, if you're feeling, oh, my God, I've had my ostomy for a number of years and I'm not near where Sarah is, please don't compare yourself because she's also done a lot of, of work on herself up to this point in time, you know, clearing through a lot of emotions um, from Crohn's disease, from life in general, and really working on habits and behaviors. And also she is looking through life very much through the holistic lens. We know each other from the yoga community here where we live amongst other places. Um, so keep that in mind as we are chatting, but I hope you will be inspired by her because I know I'm inspired by her as well. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Sarah on in here. Here she is. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Firstly, thank you so much for coming on this show because you just got your ostomy in July. Is that correct? Yes, July 23rd. July 23rd. So as you were saying just beforehand, you're hitting the three-month mark. Yes. Yeah. So you are doing really incredible, incredible, just your your whole like get up and go and, you know, dealing with it head on. Um, why do you think that is? Um, I do my daily gratitude practice every day. It's like the first thing I do, I set up my water, I have a juice, and then I don't turn on my phone or connect with the outside world until I've had done my gratitude. Um, I have a three-year-old also, so she has given me so much motivation and inspiration, like to get up every morning, watch the sunrise and be grateful. 
So that's my major focus first thing in the morning. Um, I'm also a certified holistic health coach. Um, I'm, I love to cook. So the eating, uh, the food, um, I eat like an anti-inflammatory diet, uh, AIP. It's like an autoimmune protocol diet. Um, but also from your support through the years and most recently when I had my diagnosis that I had to get my colon out, you were like one of the first people that I contacted and you've been there for me. Like I called you yesterday, my ostomy guru. I know. <laughs> I was laughing about that, but, um, but back to your point about gratitude. I know I talk about that a lot in, in my, um, in my programs. And for me, I also do that every day because you and I, as, as you will share, we come from a place of, if we don't, didn't have our ostomies, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation right now, meaning that neither of us would be gracing this planet right now. So there is so much gratitude and even in my yoga classes, and I'm sure same with you, I, I'm, think, I'm looking at really simple things. It's gratitude for the ocean, gratitude for going for a swim, gratitude for our friendship. So, you know, when you're thinking about gratitude, like really simplifying because that's, you know, it's the simple things in life that are really worth living for. Absolutely. Yes. So, um, so Sarah, first of all, can you give us... Um, your little background, quick, quick little summary as to how you came about to getting your ostomy. And actually, if, if anyone else, if you're on the live feeds, if you want to put up comments as to when you got your ostomy or if you have Crohn's or colitis, maybe if you're comfortable saying how long you've had it for, just so that we're all sharing a little bit and supporting our, each other in community. Okay, Sarah. So I was originally diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in August of 2013, so it was seven years ago. But to be honest, when I look back, I my digestion wasn't right for a long time. Um, but I, you know, had all the signs of like the bleeding and the this and the that for about six months leading up, and just kind of like did not address it until it was, you know, a life or death flare, my first flare. Um, and originally I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And then over the years, I would typically flare about once a year. So I'd be able to get it under control with like steroids and then diet. And then I'd be all right for a little bit. And then I'd flare. Um, this particular flare that started at the end of May felt different. Um, it was stress related. It came on and I dealt with it holistically, but it got the best of me. And two months after I started flaring, I end up in the emergency room. And after, you know, getting um, the CAT scan scans and all that, um, the doctor came in the room and told me that I was septic and I had so many um, perforations in my colon that it couldn't be saved and that I had to get it emergency colectomy um like right now <laughs> right he was not gentle about it <laughs> and I was just like well what are my options like that's my only option and if I don't do it then I can't be here to be the mother and the human that I want to be so I really feel like God wanted me to be here for a specific like I, I still have work to do Yes, yes. And so being when it is in that emergency situation, you obviously you don't have time to really process what is going on. But and I remember like I had seen you in May, the end of May, probably just before you started your flare ups, because we took a swim together down the beach one morning. And then I remember thinking, gosh, I haven't seen Sarah for a while, but we're all doing our different summer routines. And then next thing I get a text, you were like texting me saying, going in, going in for emergency surgery. And I was just like, what? Oh my God. Um, so I know I was shocked by this. So, you know, I, I know that you, you were saying, yes, it's you have been given this second chance if you like, and thinking of like, yes, you want to be there for your daughter. Um, what other, can you recall, like what other things with those initial reactions besides probably just being in shock. But do you remember even like those first few days as to how you were feeling in hospital? Um, I felt like 
I felt a tremendous amount of grief, like grieving my calling, grieving the old way of, you know, eliminating and um, feeling like, uh, how am I, are my clothes going to fit me? And because I am a huge swimmer, like I swim every day year round. Um, one of my biggest things was like, what am I going to wear for? I can't wear any of my bathing suits. Like, not that I can't, I mean, I could, but what am I going to do? You know? Um, I remember, Sarah, I do remember like you were probably just a few hours out of surgery or the next day. And like one of the first texts is like, what do I wear swimming? And I'm like, oh my God, she must be really out of it on drugs. But like, this is what she's thinking about. I'm like, well, that's a good focus, you know? Like, don't worry about it right now, but we'll set you set up. <laughs> there was like a sense of relief along with the grieving. Like there was the polarity because I was like, well, I'm, I don't, I'm not ever going to have to flare again. But on the other, you know, it was this two extreme emotions. Yeah. So. And I think also, you know, for those of us that end up with an ostomy because of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, IBD, that there is that sense of, oh my God, maybe I'm never going to have a flare up again. And we end up feeling way better. Like I happened, I've been amazing for 15 years now. Whereas if you get an ostomy due to, to cancer or for so many different reasons, then, then it's different because you may not have been sick for years. You may not have been dealing with being completely depleted for years. So for, for, for us, you, you know, from coming from IBD, um, it can be a sense of relief. It can be a sense of, oh my God, now I can actually start living my life again. Whereas, you know, from other backgrounds, that may not be the case. It can be a lot harder when you get your ostomy. Would you agree, Sarah? Yes. And I, I'm going to say this a lot, I think, throughout this episode, but I'm so grateful that I had you as the guru because I would say in my head, oh, like, how am I going to be able to do this again or that again? Or, you know, I was 92 pounds um, when I got my surgery. And I think about Elaine who is at the beach doing handstands and like surfing for an hour and a half and living her best life. And I'm like, I can be like Elaine. I can do that. Like, so anytime I feel down or beat myself up or get depressed about it, I thought about you. Wow. Yeah. That's well, thank you. And I, I love to inspire as you do. We're on very similar, similar paths. Um, you were just reminding me of when you were speaking about that, that initial grief. And if anyone, that first episode that I did actually with the Austin and IBD live show, which you can find on YouTube was actually addressing and teaching a technique to help deal with grief and sadness because when I first saw you that day, when you got out of hospital and you were like, you, you were like so much thinner than, than you are now. Like you've put on a nice amount of weight. You're looking awesome. But I just remember just that like being struck myself with that grief and sadness, even like all these years later, you know, that these emotions, they, they get linger, they linger on, or we deal with a certain amount. And then, you know, we, we have our reflections of, of ourselves as we go through our lives also. Um, Sarah, what also were your, besides what are you gonna wear swimming? What, uh -huh. <laughs> what were some of your other like bigger concerns or just like in general, your concerns when, when you initially got your ostomy? Well, the being a mother was like a huge part of it. Um, being able to like hold my child and carry her around, which I'm doing again, um, you know, in, in little chunks. Um, the mother piece was huge. Just being present for my life. Um, yeah, that was the like the biggest, just being present, being able to enjoy the fresh air because I was in the hospital for like a cumulative of uh, about mm, uh, four weeks or so. So, you know, really missing the feeling of sunlight and like fresh air, those little things that I give my gratitude for every day that, that you, yeah. you don't realize how, you know, you take for granted on an everyday basis. Yeah. So, yeah. Those were big. Yes, for sure. Um, also, you know, 
I do remember you like you you are someone just to tell the audience you when you're interested in something you go right in there you research it all you find out all the answers you're like an encyclopedia like when something uh, piques your interest you're like I'm gonna learn everything about it and yeah. I think you did the same like fair play to you you did the same with with your ostomy uh because I I was just like so impressed how you were dealing with things straight on or like asking different different questions from the very start and you know there there for all of us there is a certain amount of fear everyone deals with things differently but um can you say like did you what were some of the other questions like at the start that that you that you had circulating in your head i mean i know it was definitely number one watch our swimming um and you know dealing with you know being a mother and oh actually can you can you tell because uh, you shared this with me about how your daughter she is so cute sage how uh when you're changing your ostomy what her response is she said i like it when you change your bag <laughs> i like it when you do your belly stuff she says to me and then she has um uh, a, like a lamb that she is taking care of right now and helping heal to get stronger every day. It was just like, I tell her like mommy's getting stronger every day, but I also um, want her to be aware. Cause I'm one of two of her main role models that it's not normal to have an ostomy and that she has a healthy, beautiful body and belly and that she'll be able to poop in a normal way for the rest of her life. You know? Yeah. But I think, I mean, I think that's like really important as well because I don't have children, but to be able to make it seem like this is okay, this is who I am rather than hiding it from, from your kids, especially when they're little, like say age is only three. But also it is that, that um, idea of like kids, they are so resilient and it's this curiosity, like, ooh, what is this? Ooh, like, can I play with this? <laughs> like requires supplies but in the beginning um one of the things other than this bathing suit that um was a concern to me was supplies not knowing what to get i knew i didn't want the supplies that well i'm appreciative of the supplies from the hospital but after talking to you and you said you use like the mini pouches and the ones from the hospital are big and floppy i was like well i'm feeling that way but i don't know the options out there so I was like, what do you use? You told me what you use. You gave me the numbers. And I basically got like everything that you used. Um, and then more recently with leaks and stuff like that uh, and my stoma changing sizes, like it's shrinking. I think it shrunk like a quarter of an inch just last week. Um, the barrier rings that I'm using now and I haven't had any issues. Like it's been wonderful since. I started using those so that was a big concern in the beginning yeah yes ostomy supplies are a huge concern and i think that was what was really nice because we've been working together from the start of this and i should say like you are in my program surviving to thriving but you know we've been you, you actually just started it two weeks ago or maybe last week i can't remember there's so much going on but we have been working together from the start of this and I, I know myself, I'm like, wow, this would be really useful for like all of those little questions, you know, and, you know, we live near, near each other. So I'm able to come over and go, oh, here, take some of these, this, some of this, <laughs> this is how you use them, you know, and you're like, can you make a YouTube video on how to do that? But I think that is a, that is a very legit concern for people new to ostomies. And when you don't know anyone with an ostomy, um, how to just the, those how to's at the start. So, you know, if, if, if you're not doing a program with me to try and find, there are resources out there to ask questions, but I must say, if I had someone holding my hand from the start, I think I, I would have been in a different place way faster too. <laughs> I'm so lucky. And I think that um, the show that you did with nurse Anita, if that was really helpful for me. So if, anyone's interested in if you haven't seen that episode and you're wondering about you know fitting your your bag and cutting it to size and how to avoid leaks and that was a great episode 
Yes, yeah, I know. Nurse Anita, check her out. The website is Anita Nurse, A N I T A Nurse.com. Uh, she's an awesome resource and has a great sense of humor, which you have to have in this business, right, Sarah? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just going to go in and just check in with our comments here um, to have a little look. So Kelly Sue is asking, uh, oh, a belt that you might use for a yoga practice. All right. So last week I did a whole um, episode on exercise with an ostomy and I'm going to be doing an ostomy um, yoga for ostomates and people with IBD, which is actually going to be starting now the end of October, I think October 28th. And it's going to be a six week series instead of an eight week series, um, just because I never got around to advertising it, basically. So I'm just pushing it out a little bit more. Um, you can use, so so Kelly, for that, um, you can use one of the support hernia belts. You can get the uh, stealth belts. Personally, I just, if you go back to that, that episode on YouTube, you'll see that I just tuck everything into my yoga pants and into my underwear. And for me, that works, but I'm a smaller person and that has worked well for me, but a lot of people like to use the support belts and that can also give a bit more support at the core um karen says love the gratitude ritual congrats it's going so well to sarah thank you karen thank you. and my cousin tara in ireland is giving us a thumbs up good for you both thank you tara uh, let's just see if there's any more questions here um so Mary Ann says, I had so many complications with my colostomy. I was advised by my surgeon not to do sit-ups or strenuous ab work, but I'd like to get in shape before a second reversal attempt. What is a low impact ab workout I can do? Pilates requires a lot of core strength. So Mary Ann, thanks for that question. I would advise you to go again to my YouTube channel, Elaine O'Rourke Yoga, Ostomy and IBD. There is a core exercise video on there. And you can also watch the video from last week. And I would also suggest signing up for my yoga for people with ostomies and IBD and you can check out that on my website, elenorock.com, and I'll put that up in, in a minute so you can see that. Um, thank you for that question. Um, Karen also says that um, she's impressed with your strength, Sarah, and sharing all your story. Um, so Karen says also her dad went through this in his early 50s because of Crohn's disease. So she also knows as someone with Crohn's and an ostomy in her family, how that feels. Uh, Megan says, hello, beautiful goddess, warrior women, love you both. Well, we love you too, Megan. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. So keep the comments coming in. Also, if you want to share, you know, if, if you remember when you were a newbie, what feelings that you had and maybe any insight that you have that helped you on your journey also. Um, so Sarah, um, what are some other things now that you're almost three months into having an ileostomy? Um, what are some other things that you feel have helped you in these initial months? Finding people who have been through it before me. So there's you and, you know, thanks to the internet, there's lots of different resources. Um, on Instagram, there's like one woman in particular who I follow who um, was a bodybuilder at one point in time. So she is shows her workouts every day and her food and that stuff really interests me. Um, I think her name is It's dot just dot Raina R A I N A and she's big advocate in um the ostomy world also. Um and yeah just just learning watching people who have had success who are my age around like that I can relate to. Yeah. And that inspire me. Um and looking at what they do and incorporating things that they do into my life along with my holistic um 
you know, background. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I'm, a, I, I became a holistic health coach. I'm certified. My husband's a holistic health coach. So like we live this lifestyle that we've lived because of the pain teacher, you know, led us to this holistic lifestyle. Um, originally with him getting his gallbladder out and then eventually with my um, autoimmune. And, and I want to say too, I was originally diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. I, my diagnoses have gone back and forth between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Like we're not really clear which one it really ever was, but, uh, no, so it could have been both. I don't really, and it is just a diagnosis. Like I don't try and be too attached to any of that stuff. Exactly. And actually something um, that you'll get to a little further along in my program is that Personally, I don't like to identify as I have Crohn's disease. And I think this is important when you are going through illness and disease, right? Because we, we all get so used to saying, oh, I have Crohn's disease. Oh, I am this, I am that. But we're not, right? We are these little soul be beings having an experience of symptoms. So... Yeah. I haven't had symptoms of Crohn's disease for 15 years, so I don't even like saying that I have Crohn's disease. I say I have an ostomy because of Crohn's disease, but I, Crohn's disease doesn't reside anywhere in my body. So looking at the way that we speak, right, the words that we use, and especially when we start into this new life with an ostomy, or if you've been recently diagnosed with IBD, um, keep the windows open so that you don't feel like, oh my God, this is who I am. Because you're not, you're still whoever your personality is and that we all have work to do, right? We all have our, our um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like our, our personalities that feed into things. We have our ways of thinking that may not be healthy, and that may be how we need to change like our outlook. And that's what, you know, you and I have worked a lot with that, you know, separately and together with a lot of mindset stuff. And I really think like you're, you're so courageous on, on your path right now and with, with really embracing this new life, like just getting on this show, right? Three months into having an ostomy. I don't think I would have been brave enough to do that. And also, like it is your personality, you're a very open person. And I think that's, you know, you're comfortable sharing that, you know, you're comfortable. And I think that's that's also who you are and that's your way of also dealing with it. Would you agree? Totally. And yes, the, the emotional work, like the tapping um, in episode one uh, that you did brought me to my knees and with tears, like the emotional release that I had, not with just, you know, we tapped, I tapped with Elaine, emotional freedom technique. Elaine is a facilitator and we've done it, you know, a few, maybe three or four times over the course of the past few years. So not just with an ostomy, but before ostomy. Um, and also I've been committed to doing Joe Dispenza. Uh, if you've never heard of him, it's Joe Dispenza. He's a metaphysical uh, author and motivational speaker, and he um, does guided meditation. So I've been doing his guided meditations every day and learning to like rewire my thinking and my thoughts. Um, I try not to say words like never or always, because, you know, like you just said, um, I started your module to the second week of your program. And I love how you said, I don't say I have Crohn's disease anymore. I say I had it because the language that we use is so powerful. If yeah. you say I'll always have Crohn's, then you'll always have Crohn's, you know? Mm -hmm. So what kind of life do you want to create? Do you want to used to have Crohn's or do you want to always have Crohn's, you know? Yes. Um, great. I love Joe Dispenza and I refer to him through both my program, my surviving to thriving with an ostomy and also my program for people with IBDs. Um, I refer to him and use some of his work, um, in my programs because he's just amazing. And plus just to have the science behind all of this, like he, he is a, a scientist, he is a doctor and he really, 
makes some of the woo-woo stuff a lot more real and acceptable mainstream, I feel. Um, so Sarah, um, what else did I want to ask you? Oh yeah, so since we're, we're just talking about the program that you started in and now you're in module two, um, how is there any ways that you have found it to be helpful? And this is just asking candidly, just so that if anyone's thinking of working with me, um, have you found it of value or like what, what do you think so far? I, I've already found so much value in it. Like along with the Joe Dispenza meditations, I really loved your meditation in the first week because it was specific for Ostomy. As great as the Joe Dispenza meditations are, the, your meditation was, and it was a lot shorter. <laughs> it was like seven and a half minutes. But sending love to my stoma and like, there's not a lot of meditations you can go on YouTube and look up that are like specific to sending love to your stoma. So I really enjoyed that. Um, you talking about the importance of keeping supplies. We've talked about this yesterday, but uh, Elaine, I've heard her on her show and on um, in the program talk about the importance of keeping supplies with you, like, you know, three or three to five extra bags, flanges, paper towels, anything you would need just in case you had a leak or you might need it. So um, in the questionnaire, it, it asks you, do you have an emergency supply kit? And I was like, I'm thinking about creating one. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And then I got my new supplies the other day. And the first thing I did was I made my kit. And then I went for a family walk. And I had an incident where I needed um, the supplies that were in that kit. And I went from feeling like this mortified, like horrified feeling from what happened on this walk to feeling, you know, I'm able to shift to gratitude. Okay. Yes, that might have been horrifying. Nobody knows what happened. And I'm so grateful for Elaine for drilling it in my head that I had to have these supplies because these supplies like saved me that day. Oh, that was so, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, okay, note to self, keep paper towels and like an extra face cloth with me in water all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that, that that little hint was put into immediate use and action. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, I do want to say for anyone that isn't that doesn't already know, this is my website, elenawork.com. And I do also have, for people with ostomies, you can go on there um, underneath the ostomy programs and just grab your free guide, three ways to eliminate fears about your ostomy, and that will get you going. And if you have IBD, you can go under the IBD section and download your guide about hidden causes, five mistakes even well-informed people make with IBD. Um, I think there's a lot of really valuable information in there myself, actually. Uh, so to wrap things up, Sarah, what did we say yesterday is, going, is on the bucket list for next summer? So I, I want to mention that um, another thing that has helped me heal is my swimming. Like I said, I swim year round. We live in New England, so it's very cold. I practice the Wim Hof method. Um, swimming in the ocean is like literally my favorite thing to do. So uh, the fact that I can do it year round. But it also helps with autoimmune disease. If you don't know Wim Hof method, check that out. This is like the long winded answer to your question. Um, and we have some nice quarries on the little island that we live on. And so one of my biggest things was like, when will I be able to jump again? Well, I said to Elaine yesterday, are, are you able to jump into the quarry now? Because uh, jumping, even on the ground, has been something that I'm like, kind of freaks me out now that I don't have a colon. And Elaine said, yeah, we can, you can jump in the quarry. And and I said, I can. She's like, yeah, maybe not just yet, but let, how about this? Let's make a deal. Next summer, we're jumping in the quarry. <laughs> so me and Elaine have a date next summer to jump in the quarry. <laughs> Absolutely. 
<laughs> and we're going to, oh, I know you're going to keep swimming all year round. I'll, I might be in my wetsuit surfing, but well, I'll keep I'll, asking you. Know. <laughs> oh, exactly. I'll, I'll keep on as for, uh, for as long as I can. Um, anything else, Sarah? Anything else that you would like to share on your journey so far, being new with an ostomy? Um, well, also check out my website. That was a big thing. Me and my husband, our um, website, happyhealthyhumanity.com. Um, I, I blog. I'm due to do another blog. Um, there's some blogs pre-ostomy, and then I do have a blog that was from my experience of, you know, getting the diagnosis and stuff like that. Um, and just keeping a positive attitude and trying to keep your mind like as positive as possible like every single day being grateful for this life and this life-saving procedure thank god because like you said i know i wouldn't be here without it so i every day on my gratitude there is ostomy stoma ostomy supplies thank you <laughs> exactly and also just on the mention of ostomy supplies, um, if you don't have access to ostomy supplies or if you have old, not used supplies, but supplies like from the hospital that you're not going to use again, then please donate to ostomy211. There's also, I had an interview with Deb Fox who runs that organization and you can find that up on my YouTube channel. Um, but I'm just going to go back into our chat again just to see if there's any other other um, comments. Oh, thank you, Sarah Nardone, saying totally inappropriate, of course, but you look sexy. Yes, we are the sexy ostomy girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we rock it. <laughs> Um, and Linda, for sexy Elaine. Yes. Oh, I, I actually would like. I'm going to share a little video. But first of all, Linda says, um, "I couldn't either. I'm ten months out and still trying to adjust. But I must say, using the barriers makes me feel more secure with my bag. Yeah. So there's barriers that you can get to put around the flange for extra security. And I know Sarah, you you tried them." as well and then i think you you ditched them because you realized that you personally didn't need them but for the time that you were using them i remember you saying it just made you feel more confident when you were first starting to swim again i'm using um the the barrier that you use now that you can yeah, feel okay. nice. yeah. but then there was the other barrier oh, yeah. so i think it's by colo class it's like an elastic yeah, we should, um, Nurse Anita showed what it was on that episode, and I'll, I'll bring in some. I don't have any right here, but yeah, they did you like them, Sarah? Um, yeah, I, I used them um, last week. I, I do a full moon swim every every full moon, and the water was pretty wild. I was like, thank God I had those because I just feel like it would have come flying off if I didn't, they, you know, they really keep it secure in the water or like if you're sweating or anything like that, so. Right, right. Um, let me just see any other comments. If you have any other comments to put up or if you have any questions, put them up there. There's also, you can put questions up if you are watching on the replay because I still check in and I can still answer your questions there. Oh. One other thing I wanted to say was the analogy um, that I just, that came to my mind about getting an ostomy. So having a three-year-old, I potty trained her. We started tra uh, a, a year ago and it was this whole process of like a couple months of like fully like learning how to use the potty and having an ostomy in, in a bag and stuff. I feel like I'm potty training myself to go to the bathroom in a different way. Wow, I love that analogy. Potty training. It is potty training time. <laughs> Maybe I could do that. Maybe that could be one of my other little things. Potty training with Elaine O'Rourke. <laughs> I can be your potty training guy. I can do the <laughs> All right, I believe that is a wrap. Thank you, Sarah, my delightful good friend. Thank you. For a little swim swim in the next day or two. 
And in the meantime, everybody, you all take good care of yourself. Next week, I will be back with my sister, Janine, nurse Janine. She was my, she has been my nurse. She is an endoscopy nurse, a GI nurse. She does procedures. So she'll be talking a little bit about colonoscopies, very exciting topic, uh, but it actually it is. So colonoscopies, because there's a lot of things that you may not realize you can do in regards to prep, especially if you have IBD or if you have an ostomy with a stoma. And we'll also be talking about some of that brain fog that goes on um and how helpful it was for me to have a sister and have the sister who was a nurse to be able to come in to appointments and everything like that so we're gonna have a fun conversation just like all my conversations but um expect more giggling again next week <laughs> all right thank you sarah my friend everybody i will see you next tuesday five p.m. live at five east coast america time and catch me on the replay follow me on facebook my facebook ostomy and ibd life page and also on youtube elaine o'rourke yoga ostomy ibd and take care see you next time <laughs>